everybody. Today's practice problem comes from Principles of Microeconomics by Dirk Mateer and Lee Kopik. We have the first edition, brand new textbook here. We're going to be doing chapter four, problem number two. This question is pretty basic, but it gives us a good chance to test whether we know enough about the formula for elasticity to actually use it effectively and pick out the information that we need in order to be able to calculate it. So the problem goes as follows. It says college logo t-shirts priced at $15 sell at a rate of 25 per week. But when the bookstore marks them down to $10, it finds that it can sell 50 t-shirts per week. And then it asks about the price elasticity for demand. So we know a few things. First of all, we have a formula for price elasticity of demand. And I'm actually gonna make this easier on you. In the last couple of practice problems that we did, we talked about the midpoint method. So if you need to know about the midpoint method, go and look at those. But here we'll just use the very basic formula for price elasticity of demand. And we can say that price elasticity of demand in the Mateer Kopic textbook, it's capital E sub D. In some other textbooks, it's little e sub d, okay? And we just say that this is equal to the percent change in quantity demanded divided by the percent change in price. Now, if we're looking at the Mateer Kopic textbook, they leave elasticity of demand as a negative number because you notice that quantity demanded and price are always gonna be moving in opposite directions. So one's gonna be a negative change and one's gonna be a positive change resulting in a negative ratio. But some other textbooks, and you want to make sure that you're doing what you're supposed to be doing, would say that they would just take the absolute value of these guys here. So we would say that price elasticity of demand is the absolute value of the percent change in quantity demanded divided by the percent change in price. And it's just a simple modification that we would just do at the end so it doesn't make a huge difference. So let's organize our information here. Because what we need in order to calculate percent changes is the old and new price and the old and new quantity, right? So it says here, if I'm going to look at price and quantity demanded, it says at $15, we sell 25 per week. And this is actually interesting to note that quantity demanded implicitly has a time unit on it because obviously our number of t-shirts demanded would depend on whether we're talking about per day, per week, per year, and so on and so forth. But we're usually pretty lazy about writing this down, but we would usually just write 25. But it's worth keeping in mind that, hey, this always has some sort of time units on it. So we can say that this is one option, but then they said that they marked the shirts down to $10. And when they did that, they could sell 50 t-shirts per week. So hopefully these numbers won't be too bad to calculate. And we can just go ahead and plug them into our formula. Now here, it's pretty easy to see what the percent change would be going from 15 to 10. You're like, oh, that's just a decrease of one third, and so on and so forth. But we can also, if we need to, we can explicitly think about the formula for percent change because we need to use that when the numbers aren't so obvious. So we could say here that in general, percent change is just equal to final minus initial, so the absolute change. Divided by initial. and then times 100% so that we get a percentage. So if we need to, we can just do this. So we can plug all this into the formula, and we can see the following. We see, well, our price went from 15 to 10. So if we were to look at the bottom of our elasticity fraction, we would say the new is 10, or the final is 10, the initial is 15 divided by initial, which is 15, times 100%. So that's just plugging in this guy here. Similarly, 
we could say our quantity demanded went from 25 to 50. Now, if you're good with numbers in your head, you can see if this is a 100% increase. But let's see why that works. So here, make sure you're going in the same direction, that this is always going to be final, whether we're talking about quantity or price. And this is always going to be initial, the way that we've defined it in the problem. And this is just important to make sure that we get a sign on the number that's consistent with what we were expecting. In this case, we're expecting price elasticity of demands to be a negative number. So again here, this is just going to be 50 minus 25 over 25 times 100%. So there are a number of things that we could do with this. We could go through and calculate each of the percentages and then just divide them. We could notice that the 100% cancel out. A lot of different options. And any one that you do that's arithmetic, you know, from an arithmetic standpoint correct, is going to get you to the same place. We can see here 50 minus 25 is 25. Divided by 25 is just 1. Times 100% is just 100%. 10 minus 15 is negative 5, divided by 15 is negative 1 third times 100%. That this is about 33%. It's in fact 33.3333333 repeating. And if I were to divide these, I would get a price elasticity of demand of 3. And notice even here, I'm somewhat lazy about my negatives because I'm used to taking the absolute value at the end, which makes keeping track of the negatives kind of pointless. Not pointless, but irrelevant. Um, I guess those mean the same thing, but you see what I'm saying. But since I wasn't doing that, I want to be super careful. I'm like, wait, this is actually a negative number. So technically I get negative three out of this. If I'm expected to report the absolute value, I would just rep report three. So this wasn't too complicated. Notice here that if you were to literally put this into the calculator, you get three point something. And I put exactly three because I knew that if you did this out in fractions, that the three point whatever you would get is just rounding error because I rounded this 33% here. So we could say, well, let's look at this in fractions. And in that situation, I would notice that these 100% cancel out and I would say that this is just equal to 25 over 25, which is 1, over negative 5 over 15, which is negative 1 third. 1 over negative 1 third is just the reciprocal of negative 1 third, which in fact is negative 3. So you would get the same thing either way. Sometimes it's a little bit safer to do things in fractions as much as you can because then you don't have rounding error becoming an issue. If you do decide to do things in decimals that don't come out perfectly, I would put more decimal places than I did here, just to cut down on the amount that rounding error is going to affect your calculations. So this is pretty straightforward. And we can note a few things here. We note that because the magnitude of this number is larger than one, that we can conclude that our demand for t-shirts in this particular market is what we call elastic. If this number was in magnitude smaller than one, we'd have inelastic demand. So it's helpful to think about where this falls in the overall spectrum. But in general, you know, organizing your information and then just plugging it into your elasticity formula, it's not too bad.